London, capital of the still free world, a representative parade of British and Allied fighting services takes the place of peacetime's panoply of pomp and circumstance. For the first time since the war began, the Lord Mayor's show swings through the bomb-scarred streets of London. Fighting men in place of decorated vehicles, tanks instead of coaches. For the first time, the Lord Mayor is not in the procession. Sir John Laurie, standing on a dais at the south portico of St Paul's Cathedral, takes the salute. The units from the Empire overseas have a proud place in the long uniformed column. The Indians seem thoroughly to enjoy the parade. They added shouts of greeting to their ceremonial salutes. Detachments from the three services of every country in the British Commonwealth of Nations march in company. The New Zealanders are passing at the moment. And joining in the most English thing in England are men from the ravaged countries of Europe. The Poles break into their traditional ceremonial step as the column passes the saluting base. Today, London is indeed the capital of the world. As the hour strikes from the clock of St Paul's, tanks rumble past, swiveling their turrets and dipping their guns in salute. And now, over to Buckingham Palace to meet the head of the procession as it passes in review before their majesties. Men and women of the civil defence services are given pride of place in this strangest of all Lord Mayor shows. The king, with the queen at his side, looks with evident pride on the peoples of his empire and representatives of stricken Europe. It may be some time before we return to the gay picture of past processions, but when we do, the noblest sight will still be made up of the men and women who gave so much in the bitter struggle of today.